For this problem, we're going to want to start by solving for the outmost absolute value on the left-hand side of the inequality. Now that that's accomplished, we can go ahead and separate it into a compound inequality. The one thing we realize is since it's greater than or equal to, it's going to be an OR statement. The one thing that's still tricky about this problem is that there's still an absolute value in the inequalities. So what we're going to have to do is solve for those absolute values the same way we did in the first step of this problem. Arbitrarily starting on the left hand side, we're going to go ahead and start by getting absolute value of p by itself. The one issue is that the absolute value of p less than or equal to negative 25 has no solutions. That's going to be because the absolute value of p has to be greater than or equal to zero. So now we move over to the right hand side, seeing if we have solutions there. Solving for the absolute value of p, we get absolute value of p greater than or equal to 23, and that will have solutions. Since it's greater than or equal to, we're going to go ahead and separate it with an OR statement. That'll produce two separate solution sets, and the OR statement means it's going to be a union of those two solution sets. and you'll be able to see the implication of that union on the graph. 